Yo, I'm Matthew Kingpin. There's not really much I can do to wittily lead into this video with a title like that and the tone I want to hold with this production, so I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to get right into it. I want to talk about Call of Duty today, specifically the older ones all the way up until the late 8th generation CODs, so around COD 4 all the way up until Infinite Warfare, and how they served as areas where the children surviving the worst financial crisis of the last century could find solace in a world that was too busy caring about anything but us. Call of Duty was more than just a series for immature adolescents to fling around farcical claims about fraternizing with your maternal caregiver. It was a place of respite for the most neglected generation of our time to be given somewhere to exist outside of school or their oftentimes broken homes, and where they could matter. And this is why. In the early 2010s, life wasn't exactly easy for a young teenager growing up in the average home. Financial stability is at an all-time low, families are being ripped apart by the collapsing of a record number of marriages through divorces brought on by primarily that monetary uncertainty, and thanks to all these factors, the average household was filled with more unrest and unhappiness than at any point in decades, even in families still together. Alongside that, news stations had found a new method for attaining viewer retention, the constant bombardment of scandalous stories and fear-soaked propaganda designed to paint the world in as dreary a light as they could in an effort to get people hooked and always coming back. Which of course our legal guardians were baited into biting into hook, line, and sinker which in turn led to the older generation walling off and shutting down many of the third places, which is a term for somewhere that you go outside of school or work, a place that you go to hang out, spend time, etc. They had the luxury of utilizing in a time before our existences were even made manifest. Our parents allowed the world to break them, and we as their children were left holding the broken pieces spurred on by their inability to cope with that fact and to properly care for us. So what is a young teenager to do when they have no place to go to escape the horrors of a world that was falling apart around them and make social connections? As much of a stretch as it might sound, they hopped on Black Ops 2, loaded up their MSMCs with suppressors and fast mags, and went to work earning their coveted K9 units. As while the flames of the crumbling society around them raged on, they at least could drown out their calamitous crackling with the sound of warthogs passing over their digital skies above. While them and their friends were being barred a place of hanging out and entry from the shopping malls and skate parks enjoyed by their parents and then subsequently shut down and sealed away by those very same adults in an attempt to maximize profit margins, they could visit a virtual facsimile of one and grind and voice chat up their friends while working towards the forever desired gold camo. Call of Duty even went so far as to tell you just how much what you were doing was badass and radical and awesome. Which yes, was entirely a load of crap. The game is inherently designed for anyone to be able to play it, with a barrier to entry so impossibly low that a toddler can clear it. But that's just what our generation needed when everything else about reality was telling them the exact opposite sentiment. That nothing was possible, the world was falling apart, and that they could do nothing to change that. Call of Duty, in contrast, did everything in its power to tell you as a player that you are wonderful, you are special, you can do anything you set your mind to, unless it's getting long shot medals, and that most of all, you matter. In a time when the world was trying to tell us just how absolutely unapologetically boned we were, it was a nice bit of solace for a piece of media to go out of its way to say, actually, you're really freaking cool, you know that dude? Have a sick guitar riff and call in that discounted by hardline war crime. Rank up, master sergeant shooter sergeant person, indeed. Of course, the people who never grew up with the games or never understood their appeal have hit the series with a series of uncharitable statements, calling it a baby game with no skill required, with some critics going so far as to belittle the intelligence of the people enjoying the series outright. And that always felt extremely distasteful to me, because of the context of why people played those games in the first place. Yes, Call of Duty was an extremely exploitative consumer product made almost exclusively for the express purpose of farming dollars and dopamine. That is true. However, in a time when our parents' generation was going almost explicitly out of its way to make us feel as small and as helpless and as neglected as it possibly could by showing unrivaled incompetence and making the future a brighter one for us to inherit, wistful ignorance for the well-being of their offspring through making the world seem for all of us a dismal and hopeless place through 
through 24-7 media coverage of just a microcosm of the worst aspects of humanity, and vainglorious attempts to make themselves appear as a morally superior force by destroying our generation's ability to go outside, develop our desperately lacking social skills, and form genuine bonds with other people through the utilization of third spaces, there needed to be a counterbalancing force in our lives to compete with the misery inflicted unto us by the disastrous decisions employed by our incapable caretakers. My generation didn't get the luxury of having a future worth looking forward to. We didn't get the luxury of having the freedoms the previous generation had. We didn't get the luxury of having anything else in our lives that gave us anything positive to think about. Any affirmation that our lives weren't just a complete flash in the pan in the wake of everything going to absolute hell around us. Call of Duty at least gave us the tools to look away from the eventual financial and societal oblivion we were all being pushed forward towards, and convince ourselves for at least a little while that we were significant, and we weren't all but forgotten about. That's about all I have to say for this production. I know it was a lot shorter than my average piece of content, but I feel like I got all the points I wanted to make down, so that's that. My videos are just as long as they have to be, in either direction. I love COD, and what it represents. It's a game for the little guy, a place where even the most disadvantaged and pushed down of us could feel important for just a little while. Hearing its detractors constantly bash the games and bring them up as if we as fans are somehow stupid or morally repugnant for even wanting to play them is such a tasteless position to have, as it feels like they're directly punching down on those aforementioned little guys. Which considering many of the critics of the series are PC Master Race-esque individuals able to afford what amounts to a month's wages for the average young adult's worth of money to blow on a new rig every couple years, they absolutely come across that way. I do agree that especially over the last few years, the games have become supremely morally and creatively bankrupt though with battle passes and limited time only overpriced operator packs, further trying to maliciously milk whatever dollars the 20-somethings that play it have left. And that just sullens me. Because there was a point when the money-grubbing corporate nature of the games was balanced out by actual artistry and utility, actual things to love about the older games. I guess it's fitting for the corporations to ruin every small bit of escape we find for ourselves, huh? Regardless of what they do though, I'll always cherish World at War, Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3, Advanced Warfare even, as games that weren't just captivating through coercion, but through creativity in equal parts. But hey, I guess looks don't count for shit in the jungle, baby. Regardless, if you'd like to stay updated on my new content, please consider joining the Discord server in the description, as I do not notify new uploads to the subscription feed thanks to YouTube's wonderful system of stunting the growth of small channels when it is enabled. On this channel, I talk about whatever I feel strongly enough to do so, which, considering how much I adore video games, means there is plenty to discuss. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Please give me any and all feedback you have in the comments, both positive and constructive. It is all read and appreciated deeply. Burn your dread? Go into the future, and I'll meet you there. Stay focused, stay alive. Da 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 da. <laughs> that theme is so cool, dude. Now I can't even find the fucking computer. I know, I can't see shit. Turn on the thing! Turn on the thing! Damn it, please! Ah! <laughs> Press Holy the... shit, he's right there! <laughs> fucking work faster, Windows 95! I've got the terminal. My fucking cape is blowing in the way of the fucking PC. I can't read the screen. I want to cry. Uh, the Titan is still standing. I can't fucking read this PC screen because my cape's blowing in the fucking way. Ah! I want to cry. Okay, I got it. You got it? No. Oh, it's calibrating. That's why. Oh, dear God. No, I wanted. Oh. <laughs> I wanted orange. Cave. It gave me lemon lime. <laughs>